Hi everyone, I hope you're here. This is the first time I'm doing this, so forgive me. Hi everyone, this is Karen. Nice to see you all. And this is my very first video, so please uh, realize I'm learning um, all of the tricks. And tonight's talk is going to be on revision, which is a really, really gigantic subject in um, law of assumption, law of attraction. Um, it's been a part of my life for 45 years, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, when I started this, I was really young. I was in a, a very bad situation in anyone's book and I needed literally to have a miracle happen um, revision was part of that miracle Neville Goddard was uh, part of that miracle Joseph Murphy was part of that miracle so let's get into revision and what it is in its purest form is forgiveness forgiveness literally means what you thought imagined happening never really did it was a mental construct. It's one that probably you don't even realize is running your life. And it's operating in your life. And it's causing all kinds of havoc. Usually the three parts of um, something that is, is not fondly viewed is sin, guilt, and fear, which is well beyond what I want to talk about tonight. It's using revision properly. Uh, one of the things that is predominant in this uh, movement is using revision to change circumstances that have happened. And uh, yes, you can do that. Certainly you can. What you're actually doing though is putting your consciousness into a different script. You're not changing a darn thing. Um, you, and, and hey, it's done every day. So if something happens like a car accident and um, you want to revise it to a fender bender, you can certainly do that. But what you're doing literally is making um, a choice to go to another script that's what you're doing with your imagination and there's nothing wrong with that at all where I have a problem hi Monica hi Elena how are you two um, thanks for joining hi Freddie hi Brendan hi Laura gosh you're all here thank you so much for joining um, again, back on, on changing circumstances, I want you to know something. Your imagination created the made the circumstance that you are seeing exactly the way that it is. Use it. Use it the way that you're judging it. It has within it the power to transform your life. So I was involved in a car accident the night before Thanksgiving. I still get chills about it. <laughs> and uh, it was profound. Um, I'm a very careful driver. Um, that night, something happened. Circumstances happened. And, hi, Christine. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Juan. And so I did not revise it. I didn't. I let it play out because I knew it was part of the bridge of incidents to what I desired to have happen, and that's a healing with my SP&I. And it was a long bridge, as all bridges are with between him and I. Uh, we're on one right now that has lasted six weeks. It's probably going to last another four months. I'm not giving up. So um, I allowed it to happen. I asked myself, what is it that it can give me? Just the way it happened. And I stopped judging it as harsh. Um, the man who was involved laying out there on the pavement was just bruised. Um, and he was on his Walkman. 
crossing the road, not in the crosswalk, without a moon. So where he was crossing, I didn't see. And so my car impacted his body. But the thing is, I revised the uh, incident to where I did not run him over, cause his death. I revised him being lifted above my SUV, placed in my windshield, rolling off my car. No one, no one who uh, examined the occurrence can make sense out of it. And um, honestly, that is the proper way of using revision. To save somebody else's life, I will, I will use revision. I've used revision in many ways. Um, to change circumstances, Oh yeah, I was, I had my magic wand out. In fact, I'll show it to you. My magic wand out and I said, presto changeo, presto changeo. And I am known for doing that. And if it is a circumstance that benefits other people and I am guided to do it, I just do it. I influence circumstances so that it benefits all concerned. If it's for me, I have learned to put the magic wand away. I am going to go through the circumstance and see the blessing exactly the way it is. And I gave up my magic wand when it comes to my, to my uh, special relationship. And I'm allowing this to just for once and for all play itself out completely as long as it takes. And I love him that much. I love myself that much. And it's, it's agonizing to allow things to be the way they are. 99% of the time that we use the magic wand of revision to change people and to change circumstances, we're doing it out of selfish concerns. And also realize that when you change something outside you, there's a message there for you, a lesson for you, a gift for you, and it's just going to be saved for some other time. It's going to nip you in the bud, and it's going to hit you once again. You cannot revise the heck out of your life so that you are scot-free of your uh, predominant thoughts that are hidden from you, um, and it's going to come up. That's the healing power of the mind. And so I am begging you to revise only self. Whatever I see external to me, I know is a message that I'm giving myself. And so what is the message? Um, I, I've learned so much from my bridge of incidents this time uh, with my SP. Um, I have raised myself so much higher. And I am blessed by this whole incident. And no, I'm not revising him. Not once. I'm not interfering with the natural flow that he is making in his life. I'm letting him uh, go through the consequences of his decision. And I am standing by waiting for the best opportunity uh, to give him another chance at uh, the situation of healing. It's not going to be until the end of the summer, I can tell. So, now revising, revising someone such as a, an ill loved one, we all want to do that. The best way to revise them is to lift them up to their highest level. Do not take their illness away from them. It's their blue blanket. You don't want to interfere, okay? Also realize that you are the observer of someone being ill. Ask yourself why. What is it that their illness is showing about you, about yourself? Revise yourself. Bless them for showing you a reflection of what you need to take a look at. If someone has cancer, as an example, then take a look. Hi, Curly. Take a look at what aberrant cells in your own system are multiplying. 
because you are distracted, take a look. If someone is always sick, take a real good look at your, your state, okay? Um, I, have, I have someone very close to me who's always sick. And you know what? It's a call for love. That's all it is. And so I just give her love. I hug her. I tell her how wonderful she is because she really is. And I let it go. I just let it go. I know she needs to have the circumstances that she's making with her imagination. I don't try to change her. I lift her up always. And, um, and I know it's hard to do that, especially when it comes to illnesses with small children. Let me tell you about small children and also animals. I'm real close to a lot of animals. They will emulate the mental conditions that are surrounding them. So they're going to play it out for you to look at. If a child has a tummy ache, take a look at your own at your own empowerment that is being kept inside you because empowerment starts from the lower level and comes up express yourself go scream go laugh play with the child i can guarantee you that children and animals heal a heck of a lot faster when hi elena hi meg i love you guys um, heal a heck of a lot faster when you take responsibility for what they're reflecting to you and um, they are they are givers they're such givers to the point where they will get sick in order to help you heal and so use that that way revise yourself now I keep on saying that revise yourself revise yourself revise yourself I mean that I'm so tired of people wanting to use the magic wand, make everything external that they make to begin with, with their imagination, go bye-bye. It's there for a reason. You are the operant power in your life. Your imagination made this situation the way that you're perceiving it. Ask yourself why. What's the blessing? Find out what your world is trying to communicate to you because it's just a mirror find that out and then it will automatically change of its own volition it will disappear into the nothingness from which it came we want to be the operant power in our lives we are at all times and you're doing a bang-up job Take a look at what you're making in your life. See what it has to communicate to you. It's not, it's not truly stopping you from having what you desire. It is a way shower. Um, the man who was laying on the pavement, just with scrapes and pains okay I knocked him I knocked some sense into him I was his healer also and I had to admit that he represented my SP to me I wanted to knock some sense into my SP which I ended up doing um, it just took another two weeks that's fine so um, he played a part that man played a part in my relationship with my SP and I bless him in fact I had a dream about him that um, he thanked me for waking him up he was dressed in a suit he had gotten employment and he was doing quite well from that moment of being hurt and on the street um, I'm fully insured so the insurance took care of everything and it took me a couple of days to uh, just sit with myself and say, why the hell did I create that? And um, it was a blessing in disguise. So I had some questions given to me. Um, 
steps on revising self. That's a good one. Number one, you take a look at what is presenting itself to you. Just the way it's presenting itself. Don't try to change it. How are you feeling towards that situation or that person? Be honest. If you want to smack the crap out of them, then there's some anger coming up. Why is it that's being triggered right now? Okay, uh, possibly because you need to let go of uh, some passion that is, and this is a good one for me, some passion that is kept contained within you about a judgment of releasing passion. That really gets me, okay? So in this case, I released a whole bunch of passion. I was walking the streets of Boise and I was fully, gainfully, passionate in my operant power. Literally, the streets that I was walking on spread like the Dead Sea and I was going down to my, uh, at that point, my designated uh, event and they were open for me with the person coming in early for me to have me get what I wanted for me to give to somebody else. And they just laughed. And I said, well, here's an extra $20 tip. Thank you very much for following your guidance and being here for me. I appreciate that. So, um, okay, so the next step would be, first you look at it. Secondly, you see the message. You go inside and you follow the message. Thirdly, it raises you to a higher level and you yourself are revising yourself. And you feel different. And you know, you know that you have revised yourself because that incident doesn't come back again. And so that's the first and so far the last time that I've gotten into a, an accident where somebody else was hurt. I certainly don't want to go through that again. Um, and I am watching myself more carefully when I'm driving. Anyway, the next question is um, persistence in revising a situation. It's more of a question of persistence, but also what you want to do is again go back to revising yourself. If I keep on having a situation where I keep on hitting somebody <laughs> with my car, I am going to stop driving a car for a while, go by walking or Uber, and I am going to ask myself, who is it I keep on hitting? Who do I want to wake up? And it's probably going to be me. So I'm going to sit down and I'm going to make a list of what is going on with me that I need to revise. And I'm going to be gut honest. And it's like coming to Jesus and saying, okay, Jesus, these situations in my life right now, in my inner life, are not working. So I need some insight. And you're going to get some insight when you ask for it. Um, how to revise third party? Do not. Don't mess with externals. If you have a specific person that is in a situation with another party, let it be. Simply let it be. Raise them both up. Raise yourself up. And stop obsessing over somebody else being the source of your happiness. They are not your source, honey. You are. And you need to get a life. You need to make your life as successful and happy as possible. And you need to live your life as the beloved person in a wonderful relationship. And stop making it a relationship with somebody else, perhaps. Whatever. It's okay if it ends up that that person leaves that person, comes back to you. Of course it is. But don't dwell on that. 
Focus on your own life. Make it as successful as possible. Now, bless them for loving being my reflection. Yes, Juan. Thank you, Carrie, for saying it was powerful. Hi, Karen. Hi, Sonia. And um, so right now I want you to post any more questions that you want me to ask or to, that you want to um, ask right now. I am having problems viewing okay, comments. Again, this is my first time. A common theme I have is betrayal, friendship, sisterhood. Constantly, so to revise the script, I change it. I would need to be who so that I can be different. Um, okay. So that it can be different. That's a really good question. Thank you for bringing it uh, forth, Elena. Betrayal. It all boils down to, in the beginning, this is the myth, okay? Didn't really happen. In the beginning, we betrayed God by destroying the peace of heaven by saying, since you're not going to make me special, I am going to make a reality that you can enter not, and I am going to set up being God of my reality. It gave birth to sin, guilt, and fear, and that's what gave birth to the entire 3D virtual reality that we are healing in all of its ramifications. So look at your betrayal of God, the Father who gave, who created us, and make good with that. That's where all betrayal stems. Revising childhood hurt and rejection, Brendan. Okay. <laughs> um, your imagination makes up a childhood in the moment of now to support your state and your self-concept. So what I want you to do is raise your self-concept to one that was never hurt. And you do that by boldly engaging with other people and giving to them love and acceptance and joy. And therefore, you find it within yourself. Forget about the past. It does not exist. It's made up at every moment. So forget it. Let it go. It doesn't exist. That's the best way to revise it. And Neville goes into this many times. To revise the past, you revise yourself. It did not happen. Every time that you think it did, realize that you are in the state of feeling that you are hurt and rejected, and only you can reject yourself. Only you can hurt yourself, and you hurt yourself through keeping a hold of the barricade around your heart. So, as silly um, as it sounds, you need to let that barricade go. The barricade is keeping you from what you desire most, and that is love. And so, let the barricade down. And I want you to go out there and love the first person. And just say hi to them. Compliment their hair. Be joyful. Wear a smile. And that's going to heal everything that you think you lived through. Um, the magic of revision of forgiveness is it heals the perceived past, the present, and the future. It's magical. The best magic wand and we wait we we have the power to wave that forgive forgiveness means that what you thought happened never really did are you big enough to do that you are so just do it 
<clears throat> what is happening to me right now, so just let it be then. Whatever is happening to you right now is what you've chosen to happen to you right now. If it isn't what you desire, choose again. You have within your mind a third party. It's Charlie the Chooser. And so Charlie decides between the raucous shrieking of the, of the old man or the ego and the voice of love and truth. And so the voice of love and truth it gives birth to desire. So what you want to do is raise yourself, revive yourself to the highest level possible and, and experience now what that means to you. You're welcome, Brendan. Okay, so I am going to end this talk right now. Come, wait a minute, yeah. Okay, I got that. <laughs> I'm reading the comments here. A lot of you showed up. Thank you so much. This was my debut, so I appreciate all of you attending. You can ask questions underneath this video that will stay on the group. Um, it will be pinned with all other videos from the other um, people in charge of this Manifesting Mastery group in Facebook. It's also going to be on my uh, YouTube channel under uh, my uh, Mind Dynamics Coaching YouTube channel. So go there and view that. Um, you can uh, make comments on, on that YouTube channel. Also subscribe please and give me a thumbs up so that I can get into the algorithm of YouTube and help more people. Thank you so much for participating in my debut and I send love to all of you. Bye now.